Walt Disney is a beloved company. A company I'm very, very fond of. I've grown up with their characters, their storylines. They've taught me so much. It's been such a pivotal company in my life and the lives of so many people. Despite this, I have not bought the stock. I have stayed away from Disney stock because of the factors I'm about to outline in this video. The fact is, I'm about to show you on a fundamental level because Disney today is underperforming. Disney is down 5.58%, a large degree of underperformance. And you know why? You know why the stock is down? Disney is down today because of the underperformance in another equity, another, you know, growth predicated equity, a company by the name of Netflix. Netflix down 35.12% in a day, losing subscribers for the first time in a decade. Lost over 200,000 subscribers. And naturally, people look at Disney's streaming business and start to think, well, you know, is Disney Plus going to see the same growth declines? Is Disney Plus going to see the same growth struggles? This stock is struggling not just because of Netflix. It's not just struggling because of, you know, lacking growth assumptions going forward. It's struggling because it's had prolonged struggles. It's struggling over the past year, over the past five years. Only up 8.85%. That's a five-year return. That's one of the single worst performing equities I've seen on a large scale. And yet, people remain so loyal to this company. People remain so loyal to the stock, stating that it must be massively undervalued. I disagree. When you look at the Disney on a fundamental level, when you analyze Disney not on a reminiscent quality of business type thing, but in terms of the actual fundamental quality of the business, not buying into the positive rhetoric around the storylines and the narratives and all that thing with the company, but actually looking at the tangible fundamentals of Disney, you get a very different story. Despite my love for this company, the fundamentals are substantially underwhelming. We're talking a cash to debt ratio of only 0.27. They could only pay down 27% of their debt outstanding before needing to look to additional operational cash flows to pay down those debt obligations going forward. You might say, well, Disney produces heaps of free cash flow. Disney produces free cash flow from their streaming business, from their parks and recreation business, from all these other different operations they have going. Well, yes, that's true. Streaming has been picking up, but now there are doubts around streaming with Netflix and their parks, their amusement parks and things like that. Those were shut down for months on end. This is a company that struggled massively during the pandemic that lacked free cash flow. And yes, that free cash flow may be coming back, but still, it's exposed these businesses. It's shown how exposed these companies are to the risk of a pandemic, to the risk of lockdown. So this company is nowhere near as well insulated against lockdowns, against pandemics as someone like Netflix. So you have a company that isn't as well insulated against a pandemic environment. You also have a company that is in line with Netflix and may be experiencing slower streaming growth going forward. Naturally, the market is concerned. They see these negative risk factors piling up on this business. They see a lack of profitability, a lack of tangible financial strength, and they start thinking maybe, you know, maybe Disney's losing the magic. Maybe it's not as good as it used to be. Altman score declining. Altman score now of only 2.2 in that gray area. Not good, not bad just in the middle, the potential of default and the financial downturn. That's the type of risk that's prevalent. And you talk about profitability, you talk about Disney, you think, well, they must be a profitable business. Yes, they may lack cash on hand, but they're such a large company, so old, so firmly entrenched, they must have a large degree of profitability. It's just not the case. Net margins of only 4.22%. Underwhelming not only on an industry basis, but also historically for the company. Historically, some of the worst margins they've achieved. Disney's net margins, median net margins over the past decade have been 15.63%. And you may argue that, you know, coming out of the pandemic, coming out of the struggles of the pandemic, naturally, there's going to be lower net margins. I agree with you. Absolutely. There's room for growth going forward. But even at that 15% net margin level, they're not exceptional. Nothing outstanding to talk about here. Nothing to get excited about with Disney over any of these other companies, because that's what really what we need to consider here. Yes, Disney may be an interesting business, but relative to other opportunities within the marketplace, relative to something like Google that's trading at a 22 PE right now, Facebook, that's trading at a 15, 14 PE. Does this opportunity stand out to you? Does the, Disney, does the Disney opportunity stand out to you above and beyond these other opportunities within the marketplace? I think if you're aware of the multiverse of equities currently available to you, not really. 
there's nothing really stand out about Disney right now. So you may say, okay, lacking financial strength, profitability is not great. What about the valuation? You know, the stock is down 38.3% from its high. Is it undervalued? That's the question I often get asked. Well, if we look at the PE ratio of Disney, the PE ratio of Disney right now is 74.16. 74.16. That is a higher PE than Google, a higher PE than Amazon, a higher PE than Apple, a higher PE than basically any Fang stock, any top crop quality tech stock you can name. And yet, think about the growth that's going to prevail in Disney going forward. Is Disney going to be growing at 15, 20% consistently over the next decade? I don't think so. I think given the scale and fairly entrenched nature of the business, growth isn't going to perpetuate at anywhere near that rate going forward. Yes, earnings could rebound. Yes, we'll likely see a one-time earnings rebound from the pandemic. That's reflected in the Ford PE of 29.16, which is still far lower, but still high relative to other companies right now. That's the same PE as Microsoft. Do you think Microsoft or Disney is going to prevail more growth going forward over the next decade? If you're aware of the underlying nature of those two businesses, I think the answer is very simple. The answer is very clear in relation to that question. But let's look at the free cash flow. Let's look at the earnings per share accruing for this business and start to talk about how much earnings are actually coming in. How much is this company tangibly worth on a fundamental level? Well, the first thing we see when we look at the, the growth rates for Disney is the fact that we do not have any consistent growth rates over the past 10, 5, or 1 year period. No consistent growth. No consistent growth prevailing over the past 10 years. And so it makes it very hard to price out growth going forward. Yes, we could take the normalized earnings figure of 2019, earnings figure of $6.26, which is probably most indicative of normalized earnings. Let's take that. Let's take the 2019 earnings figure of $6.26 a share. And let's input that into our calculation. Now, $6.26 a share, if we input take into account the maturity and scale of Disney's business, if we say an 8% growth rate going forward, I think that given the scale of the company, given the maturity of its business, given the growth that's already taken place and the maturity of the company as a whole, 8% growth would be reasonable. So if we input that into our calculation, 8% growth rate going forward, you know, look at the price target. Still, a negative margin of safety of negative 20%. Relative to the current trading price of 124, this company is still about 20% overvalued despite being down 38.3% from its high. Does that scream buying opportunity? Not really. You could up your growth rate to around 10% and then the company is like just overvalued, but that still doesn't scream an advantageous buy. And you may very well say, well, what about on a free cash flow basis? You know, Lockie, you always say value mature companies on a free cash flow basis. That gives us a better idea of how much they're worth. Let me show you. If we value Disney on a free cash flow basis, if we have a look at the free cash flow creating for this company and we take the highest free cash flow figure over the past three years of around $2 a share back in 2020, we input that there and we also put that same 8% growth rate. Look at our fair value. A fair value of $33.23. Massively overvalued. I think it's better to value Disney on an earnings per share basis given the lack of free cash flow accreting to the company. And so my current valuation right now is probably around $104, signaling substantial overvaluation still and leaving it as a fairly unadvantageous buying opportunity. Right now with Disney, I do have a lot of affection for the company. Yes, I do like the business. Yes, I do love the products, the storyline, the productions. Almost everyone is a fan of Disney in some way, in some form of media they produce. But the truth of the matter is, when you look at the underlying company, when you look at their profitability, their financial strength, or the lack thereof, it becomes very clear that this is simply not a viable investment at this time. If, you hold, if you've held Disney for years on end, then maybe you'll hold on to it. There may be long-term upside potential. But right now, I don't see much upside. Next two, three, four years, I can't see anything really happening in this business. And I may be wrong. There may be some massive turnaround, some massive uptick. But right now, Given not only the underlying quality of the business, but also the the trends prevailing around the business, it's just not a viable buying opportunity. So if you enjoyed this video, if I'll give you some insight into my thoughts on Disney stock right now, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video or a topic you want me to cover, then please comment down below. I'd love to hear it. 
But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.